Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever. You know, I notice that whenever I do one of these live videos, I reposition myself before I start talking and now it's becoming a thing. Like I'm looking for myself to do this. So hi, I hope that you're doing really well. Dr. Jody Dinnerman here, I'm founder and creator of All Things Soup School, which is an online finishing school for practitioners who are looking to do more and earn more and uh, frankly work less. So today we're getting into practice practicals. We're gonna talk about practice space, right? What we need to think about for our physical space, not just physical, to run a practice efficiently and effectively without staff or with staff who are streamlining their roles to push their talent forward. Today we're talking about practice space and um, you know, one of, first of all, before I move on, I have to make the announcement, hit the bell if you're watching this on YouTube. And because I know you have nothing better to do than to get alerts when I go live, go ahead and hit that bell because then you'll get an alert every time I go live and you can jump in and hear what's coming out of my brain in that moment. So that is my announcement. Okay, so one of my favorite parts of Soup School, which is this crazy awesome school that we have online of like 400 plus hours of recorded content, is we have a whole course called the Happy Client Experience. And in the Happy Client Experience, we have a lesson called Sensational. Sensational is all about serving the senses, uh, taste, touch, sound, sight, smell, for not only your practice members to enjoy their experience in your office, but you know, I think about this couple in my practice who just had a baby and they're always hungry because when you just have a baby, you're always hungry. And I have in my office, I have peanut butter and jelly and really yummy bread. So one of the things I do is I make people peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And you know, this might totally not resonate with you, but this is who I am. I'm a Jewish mom. I want to push food on everybody I know because that's my experience of being a Jewish mom. And when people come in and they just had a baby, I'm going to say, I'm making you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And sure enough, I do that. And this couple, every time they're like, yes, I want that sandwich. So what I want you to think about in Sensational in the lesson that we offer in Soup School is what is missing right now? And if you don't, if you get my marketing texts each week, um, you saw that I texted this this morning. What's missing in your office right now that needs to be there to serve the senses? The sense of sight is there. What are the pictures on your walls? Are they relevant to you and to what you want to create? The sense of, or the words on your walls or the books on your shelf, are they still up to date? Do you still have VHSs <laughs> in your lending library? People don't have VCRs anymore, you guys. Um, that's that's sense of, of sight, sound. Are you playing music or podcasts or rhythms in your office that resonate with you and resonate with the people who you serve, resonate with your ideal practice member? Um, taste, do you have food or drink or um, essential oil-based things that or gum or mints that keep, like on my desk, I always have a bottle of peppermint oil and one of my mentors talks about changing the channel with taste, right? That's why many people who are like me, we use food so much and we use food because when we eat, 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 it changes the channel for an uncomfortable moment. So I have learned to change the channel with peppermint oil and literally what I do, I put it right on my tongue and it lights my whole cranial system up and it changes the channel. So I'm not telling you to do that, okay? I'm telling you to find something that changes the channel for you. You'll also notice that I'm always chewing gum. I'm always chewing gum because I need that physical, I need that cranial release, constant cranial release. So that's taste. What do you need if your ideal practice member is a busy mom who's running around five kids, you're going to have to have after school snacks in your office. So what do you need? What change do you need to satisfy that part of your physical practice space? What snacks do you need to have on hand if you don't have staff or 
if you're taking your current staff and you're, they're rocking their staffless practice system, they're rocking the practice automation, they're not going to have time to run down the street and grab you some protein, you know, in a pinch. So what do you need to have on your person? What kind of prep time do you need to do for food prep? These are the things that we need to think about. That's taste, that's touch is the next thing, touch. So for many years, and this is for all hands-on practitioners, this is so important you guys listen up, for many years, years, I supported and assisted at seminars, at hands-on seminars. And um, I would work with students on their sense of touch, right? I remember in chiropractic school being palpated and, you know, we would practice on each other. And I remember my partner, his hands were cold. They smelled like uh, cigarettes because he was a smoker and he would dig his fingers into my neck. And even when we were waiting to move forward, Forward with our next instruction, his hands would be so hard on my neck. And my spine has always been super sensitive. So that's a lot of input in my nerve system to my nerve system. So I invite you to pay extra attention this week if you're a hands on practitioner to what is the experience of you touching somebody? Are your hands gentle? Do you match the tone of the person that you're palpating? Do your hands smell good? Are they cold? Um, are you in a bad mood and does that show up in your touch? These are things that we have to think about when it comes to the sense of touch in our practice. The other thing I want you to think about when it comes to practice space, it's where is it? It's here, right? <laughs> is what about your touch? Do you need more touch? Do you need to get massages? Do you need to get adjusted? Do you need to get acupuncture? Do you need to go for a walk and be touched by nature in the middle of the day? What is missing for your practice with the sense of touch in practice space. So sound we talked about, smell, really important. Um, for people like me, it, the first thing I do when I go into a new space is I smell it. I'm very um, smell oriented. And um, if you take care of any kids who move differently through the world, same deal. If they walk into a space and they don't like the way that it smells, they will be wanting to leave from the moment they walk in. Um, same with anybody who's going through mold toxicity. Same with anybody who has chronic conditions like Lyme or Epstein-Barr. We are very, very oriented towards our sense of smell. So what does your office smell like? Have people, you're used to your smell. I can walk into my house and not smell a thing and then I can have five people walk into my house and they're like, what is that smell? That smells so good. I don't smell it anymore because I'm used to it, right? So what does your practice smell like? Ask the next five people who walk into your office what your office smells like. It is really, really important, you guys. This is a sense that is forgotten way too often. And you can manipulate the mood or the tone that you want to set in your office based on the smell. I use essential oils to do that. <laughs> Which way am I going? <laughs> So I'll use essential oils to change or shape shift the smell and the energy that I want to create in each space. For example, in our bathroom, who wants to smell poop when you walk into a bathroom at a doctor's office? It's disgusting, right? So I have um, two different oils that I put in the diffuser in the bathroom and it's going at all times. How do I do that? I'm a staffless practitioner. Guess what I do? I have a assistant come in. They, she comes in a few hours after each one of my shifts. So I work on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday afternoon. So she comes in on Wednesday, Friday morning, and Saturday. And she refills the diffusers. She wipes down all the tables detailed. She empties the trash. She cleans out the fridge. She does all of the things that I do not want to do. And here's what I want to do for you. I'm going to give you guys a lesson that we offer in soup school. It's soupschool.com forward slash to do. And this is going to give you the tools that you need to write out all of the things that are swimming around in your brain and what things can really be delegated. And then the trick is finding somebody who you can delegate to. If you're a soup student, go to the candy trunk and check out the soup hiring guide. Uh, a lot of that is with Shaylin Osborne and she teaches us how to find the right people, how to train them correctly. And when it's no longer time for them to be serving you and your community, how to um, say so long for now in a kind, honoring way. So 
practice space. I want you to think about physical, emotional, spiritual. Um, I want you to think about taste, touch, sound, sight, smell. I want you to think about what you need. Um, we also have a lesson in soup school called build your queendom or kingdom and um it's all about creating sacred space at your desk creating sacred space in your bedroom creating sacred space in your adjusting room if you're a chiropractor creating sacred space in your waiting room what's in your waiting room right now does are there magazines that are like old and irrelevant are there um are there books that people want to flip through do you want books in your waiting room right now with everything going on um do you have a phone that rings really loud in your office if so why who do you need to be answering the phone for while you're serving clients these are are all things that I want you to start thinking about when it comes to practice space. So that's your weekly practice practicals from my brain to yours. If you are not yet a soup student and you want to check out, oops, wrong one. You want to check out, nope, wrong one. <laughs> I have so many different things here, you guys. Go to StafflessPracticeTraining.com, StafflessPracticeTraining.com. Grab my free hour-long training. I actually just updated it. I put a bunch of cool stuff in it. If you've already watched it and you're not yet a soup student, watch it again. It's worth it. Um, and let me know if you ever have uh, any questions when it comes to all things practice automation. I'm loving you guys from here.